Hey guys, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know that Surewinder is still selling amazing products. Some of you guys have been dragging your feet for whatever reason. If your shoulder hurts, do not waste time. Pull the trigger. I just bought uh, four or five of them and uh, we had two guys out. You know how much it cost me to pay for two guys being out with bad shoulders? We just pulled the trigger and we said, listen, everybody's gonna have one on a truck. It's mandatory, you gotta use it. Don't hesitate. Don't wait till your guys go down. It's gonna cost you more. Buy a Surewinder. It's not every day someone invents something that changes the game. I found out about this product that I'm talking to you about uh, and I had to try it. So I ordered a few and after using it, I'm sold. Now we stock them on our trucks. It's called All Brace and it will help you sell more service and buy you time until doors come in. There's never been a greater time for a product like this. Phil has a video on his website of him cutting a door literally in half, installing the All Brace and running it like nothing ever happened. It is literally incredible. One of the greatest selling videos I've ever seen. You're gonna to wanna to check it out at all-brace.com. They gon' know me as legendary. You win the stands, I ain't need no commentary. If you the competition, you gon' get buried. I don't cheat on the game, we get married. They gon' know me as legendary. You win the stands, I ain't need no commentary. Ain't no option, ain't no secondary. I just throw it up like a Hail Mary. What's up, guys? I don't even know what to say. Uh, I got a room full of uh, felons. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? I don't have a mic. You have a mic? I figure out what mic you're on. Three, four. There it is. There we go. All right. Uh, got a room full of felons. Uh, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jim McGrath. Uh, we got my boy Derek Lyons. Um, and my boy Josh, my general manager at Aaron Overhead Doors. And uh, we thought it would be, we, we've had some cool conversations. So I was like, guys, wait, like we got to stop this because uh, these conversations would make a great podcast. With so, no alcohol too. Yeah, we have yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I thought it would be a great thing for us to just um, chat and hang out together and uh, see how our industry is going to go. Yeah, we're gonna dictate it right now. Let's do it. Let's go. We'll Good start morning. with uh, with Jim. Why do you want to start with me? Because you have the most opinions. Yeah. I have. <laughs> You're hey, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to promote Expo Plus. <laughs> let's do it. Let's talk about Expo. Yeah, let's talk about Expo just for a few minutes. Um, we got Expo coming up in April. We've had a uh, an off year, and remember that Expo is going to be going every other year now. So we're 2022 and then 2024. And we're going to be in Vegas both years at the Sahara Hotel, newly remodeled Sahara Hotel. That's important. Yes. And um, they got rid of all the bed bugs and the yeah, old carpet. Yeah. yeah. They they kicked out all the whores. I mean, uh, <laughs> the ladies of the evening. Now nobody's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> you need to tell them that they're coming back. They'll be back by April, so don't worry about it, guys. But, you know, if you've never been to an expo, you won't know that this is an expo plus. But those that have been to an expo may know that this will be an expo plus. What does that mean? uh, We're trying to make it bigger, better, and uh, more opportunities for everybody. Expo plus. Expo plus. So is that like uh, toys? On steroids. Okay, batteries and more? Yeah. yeah, Okay. (laughs) So, um, but no, you'll have your... um, Typical expo, and the show floor is like 90% sold now. So Congratulations. Uh, we're doing real, real well. Uh, I think after the first of the year, we'll probably break 100 to 110% of the show floor. Excellent. So, um, Can you sell 110%? Are you expecting yes, uh, more shows or what? In in Vegas, we the hall that we rent, um, we tell them we only want X amount of square footage. But behind there are so many more mm. Hundreds of thousands. There's going to be booths in the bathrooms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that uh, you need to buy lunch and take it with you. So I'll that wash your hands. Uh, I'll dry your hands and give you cologne and, and uh, yeah. whatever. And then also, by the way, take this flyer. For yeah, that's a good sponsorship yeah. opportunity. Yeah, Sponsor exactly. Sponsor the bathroom. Sponsor the bathrooms. Let's see. Who could we get to do that? I like it. Um, I might do that. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Overhead Door or such and we'll such. We'll hold it such for you. Such and such. Such and such. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, we... 
we uh, know what we typically have for square footage, and uh, we do have room to exceed it. So if we can get to 110% or 120%, um, that'll be great. So I probably come off better because I've brought it up in my last few podcasts. I have not been contacted to speak yet. And there's people chanting. They want to hear about like metaverse <laughs> and all the crazy stuff I talk about. Okay. How come I'm not able to talk at IDA? You're not able to. Oh, that you're not able to talk at I should, Expo. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like, I mean, because I give you guys a, like a free spot at Virtual Door Dealer Conference. Yeah. I, I told you you could promote your own podcast. It's a competitor of mine. Oh, by the way, you're listening to Torchstop Podcast while we're here. The greatest, biggest, largest, most innovative podcast in the garage door industry. So, my point is, is that we we can work together, right? Do you want me to start texting now to try to find out what's going on? Yeah, or? dude. I, where's my voicemail for yeah. Ryan? We would like you to speak at IDA. You know, I, I asked either. if it was in my realm, you would be a speaker there. But I'm not in charge of the speakers. Yeah, let's get it. Okay. Let's get it. All right. Well, you go ahead and talk, and I'll see what I can find out between now and then. So, uh, by the way, we are planning to throw a crazy party uh, in Vegas during the. We've got a lot of stuff lined up, uh, but the party is going to be wild. And we're also looking at a couple other things. And then if you're going, I'd strongly encourage you. Uh, I'm probably going to take some people. Uh, we're going to do the zip line um, in Old Town Vegas. If you guys haven't been to Old Town Vegas, it's like uh, that's where the gangsters started. That's where, like, all the hardcore, True like, story. Italian mafia people, like, came in and bought all the casinos. And the nostalgia is still there, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I believe I saw the ugliest woman I've ever met there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what a memory. She was topless. <laughs> oh, Lord. She was the ugliest. It's true. It was like, she even had a sign, like, take a picture with me. It's the ugliest woman. Uh, best boobs, ugliest face. Uh, what would it say? Something like ugliest face, prettiest <laughs> boobs. Take a picture with me. And she charged to take pictures with her. It's crazy. She probably made thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah, that day. a night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, pays to be ugly, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, Did you uh, finish your email or is this going to take a while? Because you do have, you kind of got the whole like uh, thumb typing thing going on there. Well, you got to remember, I'm old and I'm slow. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of expecting okay. after the virtual door dealer conference to get tons of sign, -in, you know, conference sign-ons and things like that. So I'm yeah, Derek surprised. too, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> delivers <laughs> great content. Well, how come he's not speaking? Hey, uh, and then listen, like him or not, I know he's hated, but he draws a crowd and he always talks about interesting things. Uh, Tommy Mello, I understand that um, that's been taken under advisement and whether or not it's happened or not you got to remember the speaking side isn't the side that i deal with i deal with the overall yeah, no, event I know. okay yeah and and you're just here with an ida shirt so i feel like if we right. could bust so, anybody's chops it's like <laughs> if anything if anything that i have done over the last five years is i've given ida a scapegoat for people to talk to yeah because i will talk and you've to done you. a good job like that's why I'll tell you. Like I'm, I'm. I feel like, out of all the people, you're the most transparent, honest, helpful. You answer questions. You know, like otherwise, it's like everybody's in a freaking yeah. closet. They don't want to talk about it. It's like I don't know if you guys threaten people when they get on the board. Like if you say anything, we're gonna freaking chop your head off. Because it's like nobody will talk. And, you know, the, the thing of it was is in Salt Lake City, I tried to change that approach a little bit. And we had every regional director, not manufacturer director, and you'll understand why in a second. Yeah. Every regional director stand at the entryway to the hallway and thank people for coming mm. to the expo. And we did that in Salt Lake City because I wanted everybody to be able to be approachable. You know, every every director on the board, past, present, and I'm hoping future, will talk with anybody. They're not they're not any better than anything else. And that that's what I always thought back before I got on the board is oh boy, you know, I, I can't approach these people. I can't talk to them. Does uh, the president of IDA really have any power or is it kinda like Biden? 
where if he says the wrong thing, he's going to get in trouble. No, uh, Brenton Cheney, our current president of IDA, is a very good driver. I like of, him. Of the association. Mm-hmm. And I think he's doing a very good job. Good job of what, though? Like, is he just the face, or does he get to make changes? Oh, once again, he's a he's just like a director. He gets his one vote, the same as I get one vote. Mm-hmm. But you do go off the direction of your president. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if your president isn't, um, uh, if if your president doesn't have a direction that they want to go, or they're uh, content with status quo then basically uh, nothing's been, nothing's being done. Yeah. Brenton, uh, now, Kevin Petit definitely had a uh, handicap given COVID. But, mm. um, you know, once COVID was over with, then Brenton went in, and Brenton does have a direction. And he does, uh, you know, he, he is doing a lot for the association and making it uh, a more open uh, association. So I, I look forward to you know him doing his two years, and hopefully we can build from that and continue to uh, grow and be open and be transparent and be talkative. You know, it'd be great um, for you to have one of these conversations with Brenton. I don't think I've had him on the podcast, but we've talked about it. I can't remember. They all start to blur together, and I start forgetting. <laughs> um, but I'm I'm a memorable enough face that you have me on a couple times. Yeah, Definitely okay. People memorable. love you, dude. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but some of your podcasts are some of the most listened to podcasts that we have. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. You're special. You are special. I have been told that. My wife tells me I'm special all the time. My mom still tells me. <laughs> yeah, <I'm special>. same. <laughs> um, so when it comes to uh, IDA, like you know, and it's easy to bash them. Because we can sit back in our chair, right? The, yeah. the, the yeah. what do they call it? Armchair quarterback mm-hmm. or whatever it is. You know, the co-pilot. It's easy to look at the job and be like, "Ah, oh, you guys suck." But in reality, I mean, it's a big ship and they got a lot going on. Um, I still think they could do better. But you know, the thing is, is that so do I. <laughs> I mean, it, it was funny. I was talking to um, uh, what's the dude with Kellen? Mike and Fisher. Mike. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike. I was talking to Mike and I said, uh, I said, Mike, you know what, man, it would be nice if we had somebody that just worked on this all day, full time. And he's like, well, what do you think I do? And I'm like, I don't know. And he was like, well, I'll work on it full time all day. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, I like Mike, yeah, you know, yeah, he can be a little yeah. controversial and we argue some, but, uh, but I'm just like, dude, like your motor must not be as much as mine. Cause if I was focused on that 24 seven, yeah, holy cow, I can guarantee you, we would have the best IDA in the world. Exactly. Like it'd be the best association ever. I mean, what else do you got to focus on? Like just making it great. And you would hear me every day. It would be annoying. You guys would hear me so much. And that's, that's the thing. Um, you know, I enjoy and like, every single staff member we have, but we are not their sole concern each and every day. They have three or four chief concerns every single day. Yeah. And Mike might say he works for us every single day, which he does. And Mike has um, uh, been there for me at uh, 9, 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night when uh, we've had a problem on uh, with a manufacturer uh, he's come through and, and gotten us some situations resolved. And I'll never say that he does not put his time in, yeah. but I also know that he represents a couple other uh, clients that he has to work for every so single it's day not, as well. Yeah. So in that in that sense, he's not full-time garage doors. No. Yeah. And so that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I was getting at. And I didn't know that was his job. I didn't know what his job was. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. know who, like, really. I mean, the first time I found out about him, I think he called me because I stirred the pot on something. And he was <laughs> yeah. like, hey, bro. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, you got to find your boundaries in the industry, especially when you got a microphone in your mouth. Right. You know, every week. Right. And so <laughs> I, I tend to say how I feel. And, and you I know, don't hold back much, but I also am mindful and try to be respectful, too, at the same time. And I don't think they're doing a bad job. No, no, I just think we could do better. We, we need more. We and, need- and you know, one thing like, uh, and maybe this is a bad way of thinking about it, but 
you know, I jumped on the call where you get to listen to the whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were going over the financials and they talked about there being like a million something dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really? Like, but there's more to that, but go, you, you're, yeah. you're fine. There, there is that there. We could but, do some marketing. Yeah. We could do, like, there's a lot we could do with this mm-hmm. to, like, grow memberships. You know, like, we could, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I mean, there's, I, like, I can, ideas are moving so fast in my head, I can't even get them all out right now. Right. I mean, like, there's so many things you could do with a million dollars. Now, I know that's got to be distributed and whatever. But, I mean, still, it's just sitting there. It's like it's like a church with a million dollars in the bank. Now you, you got all these people out there that you could save and freaking travel to these foreign countries. What is it doing sitting? And maybe that's my problem. Hey, this is the way I think. So spend it. <laughs> if it's in the bank, spend it. Spend it. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's my problem. Like maybe, maybe I, maybe I need to learn how to let a million dollars sit in the bank. <laughs> well, Josh is like, Amen. I'm so glad he came to that all by himself. <laughs> I'm glad this is live, like <laughs> recorded. I can come back to this. Yeah, I like spending money too. It's okay. There's um, there's a lot more to that million dollars that's sitting there no, in the I'm bank, sure. and um, things that I'm ultimately as a director responsible for, and didn't realize that when I went onto the board. Yeah, but you learn that that now that um, you're sitting on the board all the past liabilities that are still in the works you're responsible for. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's steep. It gets really, really steep. Mm-hmm. And uh, you said that, uh, you know, you, you had the privilege of listening in, in on a meeting and I wish more people would listen in on a meeting or go to a meeting and really understand uh, all the ins and outs of what we do and how we do it and uh, where our revenue comes from. And, and, you know, people think that membership, oh, you know, you guys get rich off of membership. Mm-hmm. Well, we're probably one of the lowest blue-collar You're industries. You're so cheap, dude. Mm-hmm. That we're it's cheap. so cheap. Yep. But, but I think you guys set the standard so long ago that you would lose so many of your old, like, people mm-hmm. that are committed to that price if you tried to raise it. I'll tell you what we got to do. We have to raise our bar. We have to do mm-hmm. more for our dealers yeah. mm-hmm. in order to justify the increase in, in revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, There's no benefit to me. I just do it to support the industry. Yeah. There's literally zero benefit to me. I, I can't think uh, the expo. Like, I enjoy that. Yeah. I maybe learn a little bit, not much when I go. I learn more on the Facebook groups than I do, you know, on there. But when it comes to IDA, like... To me, there's no benefit. Right. Well, I do. I don't utilize it. I do believe that there's a benefit there, and I and you know, I've been. I go as far back as Dota when before IDA, and so you know we've. That was been like when dinosaurs were around and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we've done, we've done, we've been a member for over thirty years, and so uh, I really do uh, value my membership. Um, I used to beat the drum on recruitment and things of that nature. Dude. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God. That is something that I've even said on the podcast. Mm -hmm. How come if IDA has got a million dollars in the bank and you guys are trying to do good for the industry, what would a national television campaign look like to recruit people into the garage door industry? I don't think a million dollars could touch a, a national uh, advertising blitz, but on that, on that side. Also, well, if people knew you were going to do that, maybe they'd be willing to pay more. You know, we're trying to do more under the advocacy, uh, uh, umbrella. I'd uh, chip in $1,500 if you were going to consistently run television commercials national radio ads or whatever trying mm-hmm. to recruit of course you would ryan I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like well there goes that million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but that i mean honestly dude mm-hmm. i mean like that's and and right there we have to have a different mindset mm-hmm. within our association you know i i leave that association as far as the board of director in april and you know Brenton's got to forward think, and the next president after that has to forward think to the point of where do we go with the association? 
you know, we have to build our ranks. We have to uh, become more of a dealer oriented uh, organization. If you ask me, and um, I'll probably get a comment or two on this, manufacturers have way too much say in Mm -hmm. everything that we do. Yeah. 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 And I don't even know, like, dude, you're, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everybody realizes that. You know, they have too much of a say in how how we do our our business, yeah. and we let them control us. They are so scared. Yeah. The, and like when I tried to bring them on virtual door dealer conference, mm-hmm. so scared. Yep. That I think they were scared to offend IDA. They were uh, scared. They were scared because they're scared. Like they just, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Well, I mean, here, let's go back to this, too. And i got to say this before I forget it because I've forgotten it three times already. <laughs> okay, You take um, your ginkgo biloba. you gotta, you got to understand, too, and people may not understand this, that I tried to get IDA to sponsor this podcast. Okay? And in principle, we had agreed to it. And because IDA cannot work on a handshake. It wasn't a handshake. It was a contract. They just wanted to change all the terms of the contract. Right. That was like totally outlandish and stuff. That's just it. Just like I've said a hundred times, uh, if anybody's ever talked to me one on one, IDA is like a that evergreen ship in the Panama Canal. Okay. <laughs> it tried to turn around. Yeah. And you know, you can't steer that sucker and mm. You know, it, it's well, just, it's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, you got a bunch of part, like you got a bunch of people who run, run and work in companies mm-hmm. who are volunteering the little bit of time they have. Yep. I mean, you literally can't be successful with freaking 15 part time people, not even part time. Yeah. Like 22, 22 people who have full time jobs and most mm-hmm. of them run a business. Yep. Like, what are you going to get out of that? Really? And you have. 22 different personalities and you have an idea and you have an idea and you have an idea. Everybody wants it. Yeah. And it's like think Democrats it's like, and Republicans trying yeah. to get something mm-hmm. passed. So that's why, you know, it, it, we've encouraged it in something that's been adopted recently uh, more so than before is we break down into subcommittees. Now we have a small subcommittee of four people. We hatch it out. Then we take it to committee and give them our recommendation. And it so much improves uh, the the line of communication and the and the confidence that people have instead of um, uh, you know everybody having an idea. Hey, the subcommittee came to this. Consensus. You know what I think would be cool? Come on, bring it on. Are you guys familiar with a DAO? It's a so it's it's a decentralized. Uh, I don't even know this. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. But you can literally. Uh, it's great for stuff like this. Like it's great for a lot of things, but a DAO allows you to create an environment where uh, there is no centralization. So do away with decentralized autonomous organization. Mm. All right. How oh, the military functions. <laughs> that was kind of funny. So what, what I was thinking is we do away with IDA, right? We come up with a with a currency, like a token, that represents the garage door industry. And then we have a DAO, right? And everyone who owns a token gets a DAO, which is a voting right of things that happen. And we can put out ideas, and the entire industry votes, and whatever the predominant one is, that's what we go with. And there's no cheating the system. This is how people are going to be voting for elections here in the near future. Like this is the future. And so um, I'm, I'm working on a bunch of stuff like this and in this industry. And um, I don't know, dude, like with all the election cheating and who knows who freaking has naked pictures of who in IDA that influences votes. I don't know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Did I lose y'all? Am I going too far? I out? can promise no one has any of me. <laughs> <laughs> so if we, if we, if we do it right, like you give the power back to the people, why you got 22 people? Why not have freaking 2,200 or 22,000? I don't know. But, I think the problem with that would 
be people actually showing up. You don't have to, to show up to vote, or just you do it from your phone. Participating. You send a message. Bloop. Ding. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that one. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Interesting. It's it's so uh, invigorating to witness what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. How much our industry has changed so much in the last five years, and how much uh, it's going to change in the next five. Yeah. Um, we still have us dinosaurs that are out there that are so used to the old way, and we have to give way to the new generation yeah. on how they want to do things. If that's the way that uh, uh, things have to be set up, then you know we have to follow through with that and make it happen. And that's probably a little bit of my di- downfall is because I've tried to bring new ideas, new things to IDA, and it hasn't been received well. And because of that, you know, I'm not the favorite child in, in the room. Mm. But um, Is the board made up of all you dinosaurs? No. Okay. No. <laughs> there are there are some uh, uh, very young-minded individuals there, and hopefully they will have a better success um, once, mm. you know, I'm gone. And, you know, the people that are running for my spot are much younger than I am. And, you know, hopefully they'll be successful in that manner. Yeah. Uh, but like I said earlier, and uh, like I said, I'll probably catch heck for this, is uh, the manufacturers will hold it back. I agree. So I don't know what the deal is either. And, and you know, I talked to uh, like two manufacturers told me they didn't want to um, speak at certain things that I'm doing or come on the podcast because they don't want to give their competitors a competitive advantage. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you do garage doors. <laughs> they know what you're doing. I mean, yeah. hello, it's not rocket science. Like, and if you give competitor, if you feel like, if you feel like you, that you might give a competitive advantage because you're speaking on a podcast, <laughs> we have a major major problem impossible implosion in our industry and we need more innovators to come in and there's going to be them yeah we're there's, gonna see it there's yeah I mean, i've gotten hit up twice this week from manufacturers i've never heard of in the Amer- in, in america mm-hmm. american base never heard of them mm-hmm. saying hey would you be interested in buying our doors never heard of these guys before I'm like i'm interested talk to me what yeah. you got and, and there's going to be people popping up and getting in the game because these dinosaurs are too afraid to do anything and change anything. And I'm like, okay, wait, just wait, because the tech industry will get involved, yeah. and it they're going to blow it up, and the whole game's going to change. And all these companies who are afraid of their proprietary information that they think could like, differentiate to them, I'll tell you what differentiates you. Customer service communication. And, and if you want to be different and you want to be good and you want people to buy your product, just do those two things. Yep. Absolutely. Customer service and communication. Yep. Even if the product sucks, customer service and I communication. More. Derek, are we on the same yeah, page? 100%. And Josh, we're not, yeah, we're not the only ones that know this. There's so many potential company holders out there in the shadows mm-hmm. getting ready to pull the trigger. Yet there's there's door companies who refuse to do customer service yeah, communication right. and have proprietary, like, we got these things that we can't talk about because right. uh, it's competitive advantage. Now, here's here's a, a question that I – and I'm taking off my IDA hat here and everything else. I'm just okay. Jim McGrath, the guy that's been in the – industry for 35 years yeah you've seen it as well as i have on some of the sites about this chinese company chi wanting to distribute in you gotta stay in the microphone okay (laughs) uh this chinese company chi that you know wants to sell their product in the united states you know i feel like talking to them yeah you know we we're having such a, a a problem getting material uh, within our country, you know, I, I'm thought about talking to them, you know, Hey, I'll be your representative in the United States. Yeah. Um, 
Then my son tells me, you know, F China and this, that, and the other thing and don't do it. So, um, well, I talk to business owners all the time Mm -hmm. who are buying containers and people are shipping it. And I had, I don't know if he worked for CHI, but I get hit up by these guys all the time. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and I've got multiple of them that have hit me up, and I've been like, oh, well, can you get this? Yeah, no problem. Can you get this? Yeah, no problem. Right. I'm like, well, then how come we can't get it here? We don't know. But I can get you whatever you want. If you want a container full of drums, sure. Yeah. I'll have it to you in like 12 to 16 weeks. And I'm like, I can't even get a damn drum, right. much less 12 to 16. I can't get a door in 12 to six weeks. Right. That's true. And you're going to ship me from China a whole container of drums? Yep. For, you know, for a fraction of the price that I pay now, like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And that's what I was thinking. You know, um, um, here, here's my call out to. Uh, They're coming from China anyway. Yeah, right. Here's my call out to the industry. What do I do in five months when I leave the board? You know, I'm, I'm going to be a bored old door guy. Stripper. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking, Ooh, I Chippendale. Thought, at the <laughs> expo. I, yeah, I thought you were going to launch your career <laughs> at expo. That's what you said earlier. So, you know, I'm looking for ideas on how I can stay active in the industry mm-hmm. and uh, uh, continue to represent the industry and continue to to do good for the industry. So if you got an idea, get with Ryan. He'll he'll tell me how to, how to do it. He <laughs> yeah. tells me what to do all the time. <laughs> Not Tell really. me about but, it. But um, no, th- those are those are just some <laughs> some things. Yeah, you get paid for it though. I don't even get a thank you. That's true. You know, uh, but it's it's exciting to um, uh, to have been part of of this association and to be part of the industry. Um, I told you guys before uh, earlier in our co- our private conversation. You know, whenever you do something with an association or with an organization, you want to say that you left it better than when you got there. And I'm not leaving with that warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, but I think you, you may not feel that way, but I do believe you did do that. Yeah. Yeah. I did yeah. Too. And somebody else said that to me also yeah. that, uh, uh, you know, I, I did give some transparency to it. I did yep. give some, uh, 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 knowledge, uh, of things, you know, there's more that I would love to say even now, but, because I'm we'll so record a new podcast after you get off the board. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. I want to be here. Behind the scenes at IDA. <laughs> I can promise you that I will not bash that association. I know. I'm just kidding with there you. There are too many good people on there. Yeah, and, I agree. And uh, 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 like I said, there is not one individual on the board, current or past, that I couldn't tell you that they didn't give 100% uh, every single time. Well, this isn't the IDA show. Yeah, so let's move on. Oh, so, or do you want me to tell you what was said? What was said? You were strongly considered to uh, be a speaker and amongst other people. I was just too expensive. Maybe. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't know if you put that out. No. There. I and didn't. but like I said, uh, you were you were in the mix. Yay! You just didn't make Damn. the final cut. Damn, I gotta get better. Unless it's out there already. I gotta get better. Consistency and everything, including price, reliability, quality, not just quality, but great quality control. These are things that describe Somer USA. Somer is not some startup company, not one that you need to be worried about. They're in over a hundred countries and they have locations in 20 countries. This is a large organization who stands behind their product and works through integrity. And there's not another company out there willing to drop what they're doing and help you out like Somer. These guys are awesome. Not only have they been loyal to the Torsion Talk podcast, they've been loyal to the technicians and the owners of the companies who install their product. In my opinion, if you're not at least offering Somer as an additional option, you're cheating yourself. Listen, first time dealers, I've got a special for you. If you buy 10 or more Somers between now and the end of the season six, while supplies last, we will offer you free shipping. You have no more excuses. The prices are great. The product is amazing. Go check out Somer USA and order 10 for free shipping. I'm going to tell you guys a marketing secret. You want to gain more social media likes, shares, and follows? 
people love unique and cool projects. There are no better photos to share than the ones on Schweiss Doors social accounts. These guys post some incredible things. Make sure to go there and like and share their Facebook and Instagram post with your business account. So if you like their business account, you can share their uh, their post. The Bifold Doors are awesome and they're doing some great projects that will go viral on social media if you share them. Go right now to Schweiss Door on Facebook and check out some of the projects they share and like their page. Oh, and don't forget, no one builds a better Bifold than Schweiss. I already told you that um, I'd love such and such to be our our marketing team. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say that. I'm not afraid to say that on a podcast or anything else. You understand what our industry is. You understand yeah. the direction that we're going. You understand what we need to do to get to the next step. And um, I'd love to, to see you uh, put in a bid for the next uh, uh, marketing positions and stuff. We, we do not have um, a strong participation into our marketing program, mm-hmm. and we need to change that. Uh, there has to be growth in that plan. Uh, the, the opportunities are, are endless that you recognize or your company recognizes. Is it like a one-sided agreement? I don't know. I'm not familiar with any type of association agreement like that. I'm okay, the one. association agreement is a, uh, they, they start out normally as a two-year contract, then they go to a one-year contract, and then they go to like a six-month uh, notice period and stuff. Okay. Right now, we're in a one-year contract, and um, uh, there's some things going on as far as whether or not uh everything's been met in the contract. So whether or not we go out with an RFP before the end of the year, looking for a new marketing, uh, uh, vendor, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm trying, I'm, I was lost for, for okay. the word there, vendor or whether uh, a year from now, uh, we'll be going out for an RFP. Um, I think, uh, I hope such and such is, Put into I'm that. in, dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I got to do, like dance a jig in my pajamas on top of an IDA uh, sign. I, I don't think know. you got to just put in a bid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I can try to help you with that a little bit too, sure. but I'll be off the board whenever it comes up for, oops, excuse yeah. me, whenever it comes up for vote. So I won't have any uh, say in it. Uh, That's fine. But uh, I would like to, you know, from the outside, let my voice be heard that uh, I would support, you know, your company yeah it's kind of like trump supporting yeah uh yeah. upcoming senator or something right right <laughs> i feel so special right we should get signs i'm made. absolutely <laughs> nobody but i'm, I'm endorsing you well, yeah, dude you're totally yeah. a Everybody pillar in our industry yep. yeah yeah and then when you go stripper it's gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> the nice part i like about the stripper stuff is um uh, you don't have to buy clothes. I don't have to claim. I don't have to claim the money. <laughs> That's right. That's all cash. <laughs> Unless somebody wants to come over with a credit card. <laughs> as long as you use a solid swipe it in the crack instead of a you know actual stripper pole. Whoa, oh, yeah. that was pretty good. And you got to use the uh, keyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insert the keyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Uh, she's like, man. man, how did I get talked into this? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wrong podcast. My bad. Wrong yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we're excited to go out to Expo, dude. And um, yep. Josh and I will be out there. I'm taking some of my team from um, from uh, such and such, and uh, we got some big plans. It's gonna be fun. You're going right there. Yep. Yeah. So, um, um, here let's let's change. Let's get away from the expo. You want yeah. to get away from the expo. Sure. Okay. What's our newest? What do you want? Organiz- I can't say organization because it's not as uh, our newest representative to our industry. And I shouldn't say. Um, okay. Let's just go straight to the point. The VLO. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the VLO. Vertical lift. Yep. Yes. yes. And all the good that they did when we lost Brian G Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, right now we got an individual uh, struggling in Iowa. Uh, 
with his wife in critical condition with COVID. Really? And um, mm-hmm. uh, he, I learned last night, he spent the night in a, in a Jeep. Mm-hmm. He slept right. in a Jeep. And, you know, the VLO is now secured. Isn't it cold in Iowa right now? Yes. Mm-hmm. VLO is now uh, secured him a hotel room for a few nights to uh, see where things are at and try to help him along. That's awesome. And That's awesome. Uh, we have to uh, support that organization because they are the only organization out there to help us. A zipper and, was down. Yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> and I haven't been look. looking. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we have to support them. Now, that's I, why you should watch on YouTube, by the way. We, we are putting these on YouTube. Yeah, watch watch Ryan pull a zipper up. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You missed um, why his zipper was down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's by you, Josh, not me. <laughs> but, anyways, um, uh, the VLO is uh, trying to become a 501c3 organization, which is a tax exempt association. Yeah. And uh, last night I received a phone call that asked me to sit on their board. So, one of the things I will Heck do. Yeah, dude. Um, I will do in the coming months is participate. I participated in uh, the fundraiser this morning to get things moving on the hotel and stuff. And uh, so for those of you guys who listen to the podcast who don't know, because not everybody is part like on Facebook and not whatnot. Um, VLO is an organization of people who uh, started raising money. Um, we had some of our suppliers in our industry participate, which i uh, freaking love that Mm -hmm. yep um and what what happened was like people that got injured or hurt or had an issue or whatever there was a need in our industry um collectively they would do fundraising via usually facebook um you know telling everybody you know hey we're gonna uh manufacturers would donate stuff to raffle Raffle. off and uh they would give it would give it away and whatnot and take donations and then give the money to the people that need it so I just think that's super cool yeah. that we have something like that in our industry. And, um, you know, shout out to, like, the OGs. You got um, Christina. Yeah, Christina and Scott Schusler are the original. I think they founded it. They founded it and uh, got it to where it is now and uh, asked to back out. And that's uh, why I was approached to try to bring a little bit uh, of maybe more administrative knowledge yeah. Uh, of associations and of um, uh, th- activities like this right. and uh, be able to help to keep them uh, in good graces. And uh, we'll see how that goes. It's To me, uh, it was an honor to be asked. Uh, it was easy to say yes only because of the fact that um, uh, it keeps me engaged with uh, uh, the people in our industry and to, in order to help. You know, just to be, just to have the opportunity to help people is something else. Um, the VLO uh, gave Brian G's family ten thousand dollars. Heck yeah, that's um, incredible. That is an amount that um, uh, can't go to everybody, obviously. But uh, you know, it was a tragic death, and uh, he with a ten-year-old son, and they didn't have money to cover the funeral expenses and stuff, and uh, they initiated a GoFundMe and uh, was able to come up with that type of money. Um, I have no idea, now that I'm a new board member of them, I have no idea how much money we have. I have no idea yeah. what the visions are. Uh, I'll tell you one of my visions. In fact, uh, uh, I hope we can get this. It get, might get you to be thinking and stuff, but what is the easiest way for a 501c3 to raise money and not cost them a penny to do it and not cost you a penny to do it or you or you put money in crypto. Okay. That's nice, but you got to have <laughs> money first to put in crypto before you can do that. Grants. No. Um, Amazon. Mm, Amazon yeah. allows you to donate to a charity Yeah. on every purchase you make. That's true. Okay. And all you have to do is get your charity listed with Amazon at which point then you can turn around and get them to every purchase you I've make. I've done that. Yeah. My kid's school, uh, 
it was a uh, my daughter's school. It was a Montessori school, mm-hmm. and we um, we signed her up, and they started one. And every we had to like sign in. It was like weird. You had to kind of go through one little step, but once you went through that, everything you purchased, a portion of it went to their charity. Went to that. See, I tried to get that for the scholarship fund with IDA, and it's never been followed through on. Yeah. You know, I can I can make the suggestions, I can make the ideas, but I'm not the finisher. I don't understand enough to finish. When you got to leave, bro? Uh, no, I'm good. You're good. Yeah, I've got another thirty minutes. Okay, you're good. Solid. So, um, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I'd, once they have established a 501c3, then I would like to go to, um, you know, try to get Amazon to have us listed. And then basically I might need your help in blitzing it out there that, hey, you know, yeah. every garage door dealer, one of your guys may be the next guy that Bro, needs let me this. tell you something. Whatever you need when it comes to VLO, website, you want me to promote it on the podcast? There's no charge. Yeah. Like, I'll take care of it. Exactly. You know, the, that's the type of person you are. That's the type of person I am. You know, if we can do something within our power, we're going to do it. Yeah. And uh, uh, we're doers. And sometimes I don't have the knowledge on how to do it. Mm. I can tell you that it's out there and somebody smarter than me has to take over. Mm. Uh, but, you know, if I give you a good idea, you know, you need to run with it. Yeah. And, uh, that's awesome. That's what I'm hoping that we'll be able to do with with the board on the BLO is once we have the 50, we can't do it yet, but once we have the 5013C registered in the state of Texas and uh, we have our uh, federal ID number, then we'll basically apply to Amazon to get it done, and then we can ask everybody to just go ahead and, and click on that charity. Because I, I know I put into the Cancer Association – uh, years ago when everything goes to the cancer association because my mother died of cancer. Let me, um, not to get off topic. Yeah. How in the world have we raised hundreds of millions of dollars for cancer? Yeah. And, and we do not have a solution. But we can we can come up with a freaking COVID vaccine in six months, eight months. How... how I've watched, a lot. I've watched a lot of conspiracy videos on yeah. that. I've got a lot. There's a lot to say on it that. It doesn't take yeah. much to feel like there's conspiracy going on. Mm-hmm. When and was, I'm tired of friends dying from cancer, bro. When mm-hmm. Merrick and Pfizer were testing for this back in 2015? Yeah. You know, for mm-hmm. COVID? They were testing for this vaccine? Yeah, yeah. Back in 2015? Nah. Patents were put in place by some very powerful people with big money. Uh, what did they say back in 2012 or 2009 or something like that? Yeah. For COVID? They patented COVID. Mm. Come on, man. Anyway. Yeah. Did, well, yeah, you got four people here. We probably go down a rabbit trail <laughs> yeah. on that one. Very yeah. quick. So, what did you think of our place? Gave you the tour. Uh, I had an awesome tour here of Aaron Overhead Door, such and such, but I didn't see your satellite location. Oh, yeah. Is that on tomorrow's agenda? We can try to make that happen. Okay. Well, I don't know how busy you are, you know. Yeah. The the I'm big busy. thing about uh, being here is <laughs> Ryan, every 15 minutes, has to check his phone because he stays on target. If he has, I, I need to meetings. use the restroom at 1135. At 1135, <laughs> no he's, not he's heading to the restroom. <laughs> so, uh, he, I don't know who updates his calendar for him, but whoever Tamara. does. Tamara. Tamara keeps his awesome ass job. in check. <laughs> Tamara keeps his butt in line. Look, like, not only does she put it on my, my calendar, but she literally has to text me, all right, 30 minutes out, 15 minutes yeah. out, five minutes out. Okay, I need you on right now. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> like, all right. she, she gets answers from you? No. Because when I text you, I don't get any answers from you. <laughs> no, she gets so mad. She's like, Ryan, you're killing me. Where are you at? Are you coming on? I'm like, yes. I'm Anyways, coming. Ryan has an awesome facility here. He yeah, he, he is growing He's doing an awesome, awesome uh, job. His trucks are fantastic. Uh, uh, his employees, except for Josh, are pretty cool. Um, <laughs> Josh is legit. <laughs> you got to have one. That's I don't just pay not him happy. to be cool. I pay him to get results. Yeah, right. So he gets and, results. And your business plan. Your business plan is is fantastic. Yep. I, I just uh, really admire. I'm glad to be your friend. I think I'm your friend. I don't know. You're my friend. Okay. Uh, I, I'm glad to be your friend. I'm glad that. Uh, uh, we have been able to 
coexist and me help you out with your virtual. Yeah. Uh, we're event. similar personalities, bro. We're visionaries. We're pioneers. Yeah. I'm just 30 years older. Though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you've seen more, you've done more. Yeah. And it's like you and 30 years, except more hair. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, no, I'm, I'm very impressed by w- what you have here. And uh, I, Thank you. I'm glad to be that little piece of it that yeah. uh, has Helped you out over well, the bro, years. You're or... a little piece of a lot of people's mm-hmm. operation yeah. from yep. what you contributed to the industry. Yeah. And I and I appreciate that. Because you were doing it before. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> right? Before uh, blue, right? Support blue yeah. collar. You know, before before uh, uh, you know, blue collar was cool. And yeah. now we're cool. Yeah. And it's because Getting of people there. like you guys that has made blue collar cool. Yeah. And I I'll tell you what, I have uh, a fantastic crew back in uh, Dayton, Ohio, that uh, I think is very cool. Yep. Uh, that they're very, very uh, in tune with the new things happening today. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm proud that uh, my daughter-in-law has taken over the company and has is, is, uh, uh, really taken it to a new level, similar to what you guys are doing, similar to to a lot of the younger people. And I'll tell you, I'll give the one shut out, shut out, shut out. Shut up. Shout out to those old timers like me that reluctantly hold on because they have to have the last say in what they're doing. Let go. Mm-hmm. Let go. Let that younger generation do what they got to do. And we had you and your, was it your daughter? My daughter. Yeah. On virtual door dealer conference. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, like, I don't remember what we titled it. It was like, get out of the way or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you know, Kate, Katie has just done a phenomenal job in my place. Um, I just got a call from somebody real close to me in Ohio uh, just last week. And he, he was saying that they were negotiating uh, with his parents on how to buy him out and, and uh, you know, what he should do and everything else. And we talked about shares and coming up with a, uh, a cost per share and things of this nature. And I finally said to, to the gentleman, and we all know who it is, but I'm not going to say his name here. I know who it is. Um, I said, spend the money and get an attorney. Yeah. You put the attorney in there, you pay $3,000. It might be, might be less than that, might be more than that, but you know, I'll just put a dollar figure on there. You'll spend $3,000. He'll do the negotiation for you He'll represent your both interests. You're not enemies. You love each other very much, but at the end of the day, you're not going to see it the same. And so you have that person that will negotiate it for you and explain to them, you know, your share the, the share is only worth a thousand dollars. He's not going to give you five for it. And you know, he can do that without causing problems at the Christmas dinner table yeah. where. You yelling back and forth is not going to get you there. Right. And there's several people in Ohio that are going through this right now, New Jersey, that they need, you know, dad to get out of the way. Yeah. Let dad enjoy life and, you know, go on down the road yep. and let, let you guys have it. Um, We're not as dumb as we look. <laughs> you guys are like, man, have they been paying attention? Because the whole time their na- their face has been in the phones. But listen, we're we're like, uh, I joke around with my pastor sometimes because he's like, uh, are you paying attention when I'm preaching? I'm like, yeah, bro. He's like, you're always on your phone. I'm like, dude, I can't just sit here and look at you. Yeah. <laughs> like if I'm in church, like I'm playing a game and I'm listening. And, uh, and so, or whatever. And I know that sounds bad, but it's just the way my brain works. Like I can, I can listen better if I'm doing something mindless. Otherwise I'm thinking, did this bill get paid? Oh, what are we doing tomorrow? So are you saying dealing with me and Derek is mindless? Mm. Yeah, pretty much. Cause I don't have to be on my phone. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. Derek, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't take over from somebody else. Did you? Nope. You started yours from grassroots. Okay. When did you start Derek? 2015. Nice. Same year. Same. Yeah. To the August, 2015. Love it. Um, and you guys do commercial too, or just residential? Uh, we only advertise residential, but you'll do commercial dude. That, that is, listen, we talk about it all the time. There's not a whole lot of successful companies to do residential and commercial. Well, it's hard, Yep. but we 
feel like we're figuring it out. That's awesome. And a uh, huge help from him and Brent, my commercial manager. Um, but it's a challenge, and it's taken a lot of money. Like, a lot of money. Um, new construction and retro? or we, we don't do a whole lot of new construction. No. We're very picky. So yeah. what we do is we, we, we do the same thing with residential. We, we are not everybody's garage door company. Yep. Right. We figure out our lane. We figure out who our customers are that, that fit that. And then we market and we bid on jobs in, in our lane. Yep. And we have a, a niche in just about everything we do. We have a price range of where we want to be on projects. We don't want to go. We don't want, we're not looking for these big jobs doing a hundred doors, yep. right? We're not looking for those. I want somebody else to come in and install them quick and very bad yeah and then me swoop in and or fix them brent swoop in and fix them win yeah. them over let's go ahead and fix all these doors that you yep. just had installed yeah. pretty cheap so yeah it's then, a huge investment launching a commercial department like freaking ginormous it was much bigger than i thought it was going to be because i was like man we'll just run it through the same you know platform. process and we'll just you know maybe buy a bigger truck and we'll rock and roll no <laughs> no that is not at all yeah. how that works. So, you know, it's taken some bumps and bruises, and we've definitely invested a lot of money in trial and error. And, um, but, but, there's always a but, um, it's a good decision. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I'm very, I'm very happy. Um, if you can find the people that know what they're doing on the commercial oh, side, yeah. Yeah. um, it's a it's a blessing because, like we were just talking, when when residential's down, typically commercial is up, mm -hmm. so it helps balance things out to where you don't have those high months and low months. You know what um, does us real well too is entry doors. That's probably we're talking one, about that one of our largest growing markets mm -hmm. yeah. uh, right now. That's responsible for our growth is the entry door market. Interesting. And um, how did you start it though? Um. One door at a time. I hate to say that, Ryan. Oh my God, that's a, I hate. Yeah, that that's. I want to punch people when they say, <laughs> "We're changing the world one door at a time," or whatever. Like I'm like, ah, dude, no, please um, don't do that. You know, we we would. Uh, I know my first entry door that I put in was a French door, and I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, the guy that I was with said, "We took one out. We can put one back in." And, uh, you know, we tackled it, and we got it done, and the customer was happy. Did you tell your customers you were offering it, or were you there for the garage door and they just happened to ask? No, um, this was before uh, Doors Galore ever got uh, created. Uh, I, was, I, I did a lot of um, maintenance work, and uh, uh, as a firefighter, I was a firefighter, and on my days off, I would do maintenance work. Uh, I was the only Catholic listed in the Jewish directory. And so nice. um, uh, I would do this stuff, and, and one uh, Jewish family would refer me to another Jewish family, which would refer me Derek, to another. do you do entry doors? No. Have you thought about it? Yeah. I, I follow Highfield mm -hmm. Door Sales. Mm -hmm. I follow his stuff, and they're always doing entry doors and stuff like that. And I actually reached out to him a couple of weeks ago, and he's my next stop. I'm going to fly out there. and well, Where is he at? He's in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. If you go, so if, I might need to go visit him too. Yeah. What's it called? Highfield Door. He's Highfield. my competition. Is he really? <laughs> I, I didn't can know visit that. Both yeah. of y'all. Well, I can. Yeah, I was about to say he was uh, originally supposed to be one of the original partners in my company. So interesting. We tested. Um, we tested entry doors mm. and did very well. Uh, the guy I had uh, started out doing well and then kind of tapered off and uh I, it wasn't the quality that i like so i shut it down but we were i think our average door sale was like five six grand yeah uh, and we were at 45 50 percent margin yeah your margins are better than... and we were going in and we were selling garage doors and entry door combinations mm -hmm. and i mean bro it's freaking nice and clopay if you're a clopay yeah. dealer mm -hmm. it works because they got matching doors and they make their own and they build a nice door like that when we ordered our first clopay the guy I had, he'd been installing doors for a long time. He was like, man, this is nice. So it was a nice mm -hmm. door. Mm -hmm. um, That's your biggest challenge is uh, your supplier. Um, I'm just grateful the first door we installed, it was from my best friend, Brian Clore. <laughs> and he was out of town. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, the front of his house was open for a while. No, it 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 wasn't my fault. Well, I mean, I guess everything's my fault. But uh, I had a friend of mine go out and measure the door with me, and uh, he told me it was a two by four because um, his measure is totally different, right? He said it's a two by four uh, and the four nine sixteenths jams. And so I ordered a two by four door, and guess what? It's oh, two no. by six. <laughs> So we get there, and he's got hardwood floors, and there's this huge gap between the hardwood floors and the freaking transition. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Mm, is it supposed to be like that? Because here, I'm (laughs) new, right? right. And he's like, no, uh, this is a two-by-six frame, and this is a two-by-four door. He's like, this is the wrong door. Mm -hmm. And my stomach just dropped Mm -hmm. because I just spent like four grand on this door, like 3,500, four grand, something like that. And I was like, I wanted to throw up. I was like, my gag reflex, right? It wasn't the wrong door. It was the wrong frame. Right. Well, it, yeah. I mean, it was, uh, yeah. So we, we. he was like, well, give me a shot. Let me just work on this. He's like, your friend's out of town, right? I was like, yeah. And he goes, when does he come back? And I was like, two days. And he's like, I'll have this fixed up. He's like, just give me a shot. So he went to the store and bought like a transition and stained it and almost per- matched like perfectly matched it and then did this nice little trim piece around the outside of the door top of the side like you would have never known right and i was like holy cow this is awesome <laughs> so when my boy got home i didn't bring it up he probably he might find out now but um he doesn't live in that house anymore he yeah, moved sure, so yeah. he don't care but uh but i'm sitting there like man we just freaking that was a close call yeah, and yeah. so um yeah that was rough uh but it, you know you 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 have to be willing to take risk like that yep. and figure it out. And it's like R and D, right? Research and development. That's the way I look at it. If I got to buy a three thousand yeah. dollar door again. I just learned my lesson, but it's a cheap way for me to get into this. Yeah. I'd rather get in and make mistakes, especially with people that know me and whatever know I'm going to make it right, and then fix it, than spend tens of thousands of dollars trying to figure out if it's a good industry for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like entry doors. I think they're great. And I think when it comes to like growth for home service companies, uh, I keep saying this, but you can grow geographically with other locations and that helps out a lot, which we just did. And you can grow services. You can do um, these, you can do garage storage, you can do cabinets, you can do all kinds of stuff. Entry doors, windows. Awnings, Attic entrances. Attic entrances. Like there's so many yeah. things you can get into. So uh, I want to do the things that make me the most profit right that's what i'm interested right. in right, and Josh? you know without alienating yes. <laughs> your <laughs> previous customer you know because it would be easy for us to just turn into an entry door company and you know because the margins are much better and everything yeah. else but i'm not going to alienate my past customer but you can email your whole database you know i got like 15 20 000 people probably 20 plus now and say hey guess what we do entry doors. we do entry doors you're talking about a spark. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you'll probably get at least 15, 20 people inquire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, then, and then you're like, okay, great. Here we go. But you need to have that finished carpenter. Yeah. That uh, needs to do it. You know, we've grown. We, um, you know, where we started out with one entry door crew. Now we're at two entry door crews and backfill with um, uh, the garage door guys, the guys that have an interest in um, learning how to do storm doors and entry mm-hmm. doors and stuff like that. But obviously, having the um, the supplier is good. Yeah. Also, I like Thermatrue. Okay, and Very Thermatrue good. doors are good doors. Yeah. They uh, they are normally about a one inch taller than a uh, regular Masonite door or something. Look that at this guy he knows his product knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be careful. Now, watch somebody will call me out on that. They stopped that a year ago. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. It's probably been a year since I've been messed with them and stuff. Look, um, did you just post while we were talking? You commented on something. That was five hours ago. I'm just now checking it. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, Josh hasn't said anything. So we're just all going to pause and let Josh talk for a minute. Just and a we'll... moment of okay, silence. Okay, I got to read my phone. <laughs> yeah. Everybody get on their phone. I'll talk to the wall. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Josh, tell everybody. Um, so Josh runs my company, Aaron Overhead Doors for the most part. Um, does a phenomenal job. As a matter of fact, just had the most killer month ever. Yes. Amazing. We, I don't know the percentage over goal we were, but it was a lot. Um, flew past it. It was great. I do. Um, you know the percentage over goal? 60%. Damn. It's pretty good. Awesome. 
So uh, I signed him up for a leadership program that I went through a couple of years ago, uh, back in 2017. And, um, and so I wanted to just chat about that for like a couple minutes and then we got to wrap up. But um, how do you like that? I li- I'm gonna be completely transparent. So I do like it. I do like it. it's actually really. It, it's fun. It's cool. Uh, would be probably a little bit more fun and a little bit more cool if it was a few more people that think like me. Maybe like I know. I know that sounds so. It's a very but, no, he, no. he. It's a very like college. It's a bunch of like college age peach people for the most part that have been like brainwashed and they're like sh- total liberal. Uh, so yeah, just, so, I, 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 but so I try to find the positive and everything. So yeah. what I have found is these are the people at the level that we're interviewing to hire. So it's nice. I kind of almost have a, uh, behind the scenes of how they think because they're 30 something of them sitting in this class telling the speakers what they're looking for in bosses and stuff like that. And there's only a few of us in leadership roles already in that class. So it's kind of nice because the few of us have kind of partnered up like, oh, look, we can right here. We know what to offer. We know what to get people. And uh, I might be trying to recruit them from other yeah, industries exactly. into this one. Uh, but, no, it's great. It's great. And it's to see the people that we may end up hiring one day going through this already is even better because you, you want people to move up in your company. I mean, there's people that will never move up, and they're strong in what they do, and that's great. But – to know that there's people out there, younger adults going through stuff like this, preparing for when they do get in the opportunity of coming into leadership is great. Um, but no, it's fun. It, it's fun. It uh, just had class today, improv on stage in Lawrenceville. I think it's hilarious because I don't mind being in front of people, but a bunch of 22 to 26 year olds that are very shy, not so much. So it's almost comical. So uh, he talks about them like they're all super young. He's like 30 mm-hmm. years yeah. old. Yeah. Hey, I'm over the 30 mark now. I can talk about them. <laughs> hey, have you ever have you ever been that person that's been in line at Wendy's and received awesome customer service? Not and, at Wendy's. And hand, Chick-fil-A, though. Okay. And handed them your business card and say if you ever want to leave. Oh, this yeah. Oh, we do it all the time. Yeah. 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 yeah or we, walk, walk through the Lowe's problem or, is, is mm-hmm. that I want to hire everybody and he stops me. Because he's like, bro, what are we going to do? We don't even need these people. I'm like, yeah, but they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll see him as they're walking over, him getting the business card ready, and I just kind of slide it back into his wallet. Yeah. Don't. Uh, uh, I would hire 40 people tomorrow. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I freaking love it. We'll find something to do, and they'll freaking, y'all go make money. Like, yeah. go knock on doors, do whatever. You're, like, you're the good guy. You hire them, and then he fires them? Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He has yeah. to because you can't afford them yeah. on payroll. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, when All the right. budget comes out, I've got to cut everybody. We're getting close to time. We got to shut it down. But um, listen, thank you guys uh, for doing the podcast with us, Josh. Thanks, thank thanks for covering our uh, travel yeah. expenses here. Yeah, bro. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving you a place to stay slash yeah. park. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, so listen, you guys are awesome. Thank you for listening to the podcast and supporting Torch and Talk. And uh, I hope, like, if you listen to the podcast, I hope you guys just took everything we said as fun. Um, especially about IDA, like everybody here loves IDA. We just, um, we're like, uh, just like to give them a hard time. It's just for fun. And, uh, I think we can all do better. We can do better. Yes. Um, yes. they can do better. We can do better. We can all do better. Absolutely. So Jim McGrath, bro, you're freaking amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you're, yeah. you're our host. Thank you're you very bomb. much. And uh, Derek, thank you for coming down. Yeah, you bet. I invited him on the podcast. And then Tanner was like, mm, I think he's like coming down to do yep. the podcast. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I okay. didn't ask either. <laughs> yeah, no, you didn't. <laughs> so, like, you didn't last, specify yeah. over the phone. So yeah. Yesterday was a long day, and then I was like, oh, crap, I got to get the podcast room ready. So um, Josh came over and helped me out, kind of organize and get job, everything out. Yeah, he had yeah. all the blow-up dolls in here. It still yeah. wasn't, <laughs> had to still wasn't even ready. Funny story about that, and then we'll cut it loose. Um, the old place we had, um, we had a locker next to the toilet, and um, – and one day, I don't know, I was pooping, I guess you could say. Uh, and I was goofing off, and I just opened one of the lockers, 
and there was literally a blow up doll in there. And I'm like, That's funny. This is weird. This is really weird. That's hilarious. Oh, we have a problem. <laughs> we need to re interview everyone we have. Uh, but it was a joke. So it, it was pretty funny. Anyway, uh, if you guys uh, haven't already, make sure you uh, friend request Jim McGrath, Derek Lyons, um, Josh. And um, we appreciate you guys following the podcast. Yep. Be safe and enjoy. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast too. Holla.